Stephen. Andrew. Do you fancy spending a quiet night inside number nine? Oh, it's been a while. Is that a yes or a no? Of course it's a yes. Yes, it has been a while. We're back. It's Series 7 has just landed, and we haven't done an episode since October the 27th, 2021. Is that how long ago it was? It was, yeah. And I, we were just about to think about putting together an episode to look at the ins, uh, Insider's Guide to Inside Number 9 book, um, and finally review the night um, at the Barbican. And that, I think about two days later, Series 7 was announced. Surprise! So, there you go. So we've, yeah, got some new material, um, which is fantastic. So, um, yeah, so Merrily Merrily is episode one of Series 7, which was directed by Al Campbell, produced by Kim Crowther, and written by Steve Pemberton and Reese Shearsmith. And it first aired on the 20th of April, 2022. We had some new names there. New names. Yeah. New people. Adam Tandy is executive producer. He's made it to the point where he just rocks in for lunch occasionally and says, yeah, that's, that's fine. Congratulations, Adam, for your so, yeah. move so Kim, upwards. I think Kim Crowther is the uh, producer of the whole series. So, oh, is she? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Which is great. Um, cool. Yes, yeah, so we've got a new a new series again. I, it feels like just yesterday we were starting out on Wuthering Heist of Series Six, and I'm really glad we'd made the decision this time not to do instant <laughs> reaction episodes. As I think soon that would as have been a horror show. Finished. That was, <laughs> yeah. especially with this one. Yeah, I'm finding it really weird that something we when we started this we were so far behind, and we had so much stuff to get sort of through we have so much material that we were behind on right from the beginning up to the end of series five. Mm -hmm. Um, and now we have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> now Guys, we're relying on these series. Keep up. Yeah. So do you fancy uh, giving us a synopsis of this one just to kind I'll of give you get a brief started? overview? Dip our toes I in. Dip it, so to speak. Yeah. There you go. Um, so we're at a, very quiet, out of season, pedalo. What's the word? Shed, I guess. A pedalo three, shed, yeah. A pedalo shed. I'm not sure what that was a thing about, but it's a pedalo shed where three friends are meeting up to head out onto the lake together and relive some old memories. I'll keep it short and sweet like that. Good. And then there's four of them. There's four of them. Or five. Or five. Well, yeah. Just the. It's a real party boat, actually, when you think it about is it. A, it. Even without Judge Rinder, it's yeah. still a party boat. <laughs> so it's the first time we've been on uh, a pedalo, which, just to start off, is a great concept. <laughs> it is. Like, there's something beautiful about the fact that there's all the dialogue going on, and there they are, their legs just pedaling. <laughs> and it's like, it had to be a pedalo. That was the only form of... Um, water equipment that you could really water use. transportation device transportation. <laughs> it's perfect yeah and yeah, obviously sets up some jokes as well it also sets up the getting stuck because mm -hmm. you can't just bring your oars in and untangle them true yeah 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 perfect it's the kind of low-key analog nature of it <laughs> i think yeah. it's nice and there's all there's always the disagreements on a pedalo my wife and i can no longer go on a pedalo together after an incident <laughs> in the waterways of Amsterdam <laughs> where one of us felt that the other one was not pulling their weight when it came to the pedaling. I very much played the Lawrence role the moment that Donna took her feet off the pedals. <laughs> Are you pedaling or? Uh, it turned out she wasn't. Um, <laughs> Are you actually pedaling? I'm doing it. So that's now potentially um, divorce material, ever getting back on a pedalo together. Right. Oh, man. Yeah. So, it so it's a bit of a close to the bone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's um, obviously Andrew Flintoff famously had a pedalo uh, incident. I feel like what you've, you've almost, 
we've sort of created like on the Wikipedia page for <laughs> pedalos, the little section of pedalos in popular culture. Yeah, I, I think this should be there. <laughs> Andrew Flintoff. Stephen and his wife. <laughs> Stephen and Andrew his wife. Flintoff. <laughs> and Merrily Merrily. Um, so yeah, let's let's kind of start. Let's go into instant reactions. Like what what did you feel? Like what were your immediate thoughts to this episode? Controversially, from what I've seen, not amazing. Can I go there straight away? Uh, you have to, yeah. I... What I'm struggling with is I think it's a really nice episode in terms of it just being a story about, and we'll go into some kind of sort of specifics, but some friends who have lost touch and have gone on their separate paths and they're all having feelings about the way their lives have turned out and all those kind of things. But some of the, the symbolism and things in it there's no consistent thread for me that kind of runs through it. And the bits that are put in kind of feel a little ham fisted. And it's not that there's no twist because that's a weird thing to level at them mm -hmm. all the time. It's not because there is no twist. It's not really a twist as far as I'm concerned. No. Um, that his wife's not alive anymore. And he's, she's there as, as ashes. So sort of is, but not in a ha, -ha. <laughs> yeah they're not like <laughs> just turn the episode on its head yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um yeah i i don't know whether us talking about this is going to bring some stuff out and is going to suddenly lead us to start pulling on a thread and it all suddenly comes together but yeah that's how i kind of felt mm -hmm. you? yeah well very very similar like it was i kind of loved the the atmosphere of it and the sort of the whole setup with the the pedalo shed being out of season like everything had a really nice eerie uh sense to it you know the christian henson music like this becoming mm -hmm. very iconic stuff and like interestingly i think it's the same style that we hear coming up in the stakeout and um how do you plead which are both supernatural kind of oh, yeah. episodes and like so little um light motif the, thing yeah exactly so it's like it's almost like a lovely nod to there's something supernatural going on or something beyond what you see um that seems to be a theme emerging for that for the music um but yeah i felt i felt kind of similar i felt um i didn't really connect with i don't know if it's the characters or uh, i didn't connect with the plot um as was on the surface um like there's 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 a lot of humor in it um and there's some great one liners like from all the characters really but yeah it just left me feeling like uh, i kind of I've, there's something that ha i haven't quite connected with in that in that episode and obviously the the nod to you know this reunion thing the meta aspect of like the league of gentlemen and the fact that mark gattis is there like there's something beautiful about that, like that it, it's kind of, and very relatable as well. It was almost quite appropriate yeah. that we, we were watching it in the same room because it's like, you know, university reunion and uh, like the, those, I, I mean, we've seen it in, in many different TV shows and, and films like that, the, the kind of moving away from that time where it was pure, like fun and connection, I suppose, for, for people when they're, they're young and just in the, like having the time of their lives. And then they come back together later on and everybody sort of moved apart and lives have gone on and all this stuff has changed. And there's obviously big themes around that as well in this episode, in the fact that Lawrence has kind of got stuck at the beginning of that journey. And that's, that's the thing is, and I think we almost, I know you, it was not long after it ended and you said that you felt like there might have been something there about, and you said that you mentioned sort of the supernatural and this idea of them not really being there hmm. and them and it all being merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream and it's all in his head and they're, and they're not really there. And we can go into that a little bit 
further but it was that kind of was where i was going because everything was very much built up by him all these memories he had that um callum and daz kind of looked a bit awkward mm. when he was talking about the good old days and he kept on making reference to the good old days yeah. and bringing up these things that were clearly a much bigger deal in his mind than they were for anyone else the walks around the lake um the isaac newton apple boob statue mm. um those kind of things and that kind of all comes to a head where donna says i when he said that um you were his best mates yeah he cried <laughs> like it was yeah i can't believe she died and he never told you i suppose that's what all those linkedin requests were i feel terrible now but you do poor mom nearly cried when he said you two were his best friends we were it used to be but life moves on doesn't it you know, you think about the the poignancy of the episode. I think it's that, like, that kind of emptiness, which is maybe what I, I kind of felt that emptiness um, at the end of the episode that was, was really the, th- the thing that threaded through the whole thing was just this, I don't know, this eerie, nothingness around Lawrence like his Mm. life hasn't moved on the other guys don't remember any of the things that he has basically carried with him his whole life and cherished like you know the the Isaac Newton statue apple thing being the funniest thing ever how can you not remember it's the funniest thing ever and he's like just living in those times and you know he he left university went back to teach the same course that he um, studied at university afterwards and yeah, like married Bonnie, who they were there when they met, they were there when they married, and he wants them to be there. Like nothing's happened in between. He wants them to be there then when he's saying goodbye. Um, so it's like this massive 30 year gap where he's just been stuck in the reeds and nothing has, has yeah, moved on. Yeah, and she, she kind of tied him to that life, I guess, in a way, because he met her then and he stayed with her and he stayed in the same place. That was what kind of tied him and by doing that he didn't build up anything outside of that life at all Mm -hmm. and so that meant that when she went he was suddenly very isolated there and he and he he hadn't built anything else on top of that life that he was in he kind of rested on his laurels a bit and was kind of like well this is all working out fine i've got everything i need here I can just keep doing this. I can keep plod- plodding along here. And the moment that she was removed, it suddenly became very apparent to him that there was nothing else. And so mm-hmm. then he has to reach out and try and bring back the other people that kind of gave him some joy and happiness in that scenario mm-hmm. when he was there. Um, but it seems they're not really up for that anymore. Yeah. And there's that's that, I guess that completes his completes his isolation or compounds it at least. Um, and makes it very obvious that, yeah, time mm. to go, maybe. Yeah, and there, there was, of course, um, Kenzie as well, who was part of the four. Um, maybe that's Jeremy Dyson living in Germany. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like the, are they still together? No, he lives in Germany now. <laughs> yeah. And it, Kenzie's wedding. Um, oh, poor, poor Kenzie. Poor Kenzie's wife. <laughs> whatever happened there <laughs> that's like what, what's in the cupboard in the bill what's in the top drawer or the second drawer <laughs> what happened at Kenzie's <laughs> wedding <laughs> yeah no this and, and like humor wise absolutely brilliant episode there's a, a yeah, lot of is. um a lot of really quick and I, had to, I watched it a, a second time with subtitles on because so much of it the dialogue just I don't know, it's not like really, really fast paced, but a lot of it got lost the first, maybe because yeah. I was laughing, um, yeah. especially Diane Morgan's lines. She's so good. She's so good. And they're just, <laughs> they're just there subtly. She's just muttering along and like saying these things that are just 100% hilarious. <laughs> My favorite one of hers was, um, <laughs> it was when he, he revealed that Bonnie was dead and she asked if it was the guinea pig. <laughs> Yeah. And then said that she got confused with him and his dog's do- dog daughters. Dog daughters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. 
is in here. Sorry, is it's Bonnie a, a guinea pig? No. She's such a. I thought because the first time round, I thought, oh, she's like this really sort of almost tropey Donna esque character, um, and. So much so that they called her Donna, if yeah. you're going on <laughs> whatever a Donna is. <laughs> Which is a name that means lady, apparently. Uh. Um, I've done my research for Have the you, meaning You were names. trying. You, you, were just... tr- you were on the names thing, were you? <laughs> I'm going to give you about five minutes before you tell me this whole thing was about communication. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Um, <laughs> thanks for that. There weekend. it is. <laughs> yeah, but like the, uh, on sort of second watch, it's kind of like there's there's such a sincerity and a loveliness to her character, and that comes through, you know, when she says like, "Am I supposed to say something bad, bad that's happened to me now?" Um, actually, I've had a lovely life, um, and goes through all the things that she's she's had, and it's probably because I didn't go to university by the sounds of it. No overreach, I think, is the <laughs> she yeah. just didn't overreach. Yeah, she was yeah. happy. Just kind of, yeah. What philosophers reach by the time they're sort of, you know, in their eighties as the oh this is this is the meaning of life so like, no she got there when she was about 17 she did, and to be fair i mean she's got some some pretty cracking um philosophical lines in there such as his wife's died you can't just scoop that up in a little blue bag and hang it <laughs> off a tree yeah. <laughs> and i love that what i love is the fact that that is her default for what you do when a dog poos is you put it in a bag and then hang it, hang off, it a off a tree. You don't yeah. put it in a bin, you hang it off a tree. I love those kinds of little, little subtle. This is yeah. what she is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave it there and pick it up on the way back. She never does. She never does. <laughs> that tree has a lot of blue bags hanging off it. Um, also the, my mum's got a tray, a tray like God, this. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? What does that mean? <laughs> I love that that's a point of reference for that view. It's like how we used to have um, constable paintings on mm. placemats. And I remember seeing, I can't remember which My one My mum's got a placemat out of that. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's like the placemat. <laughs> which and came of, first, the placemat well, or the Well, exactly, painting? exactly. Um, but yeah, similar to, and that's just a very nice, like... I don't know what the right word for her sort of character is without being really condescending, but just a realness um, to it, like a yeah, hmm. grounded, grounded, nice. The other thing with the, so I was thinking again, it's and it's the sort of the nod to the to the emptiness that I felt um, is w- within that the context of like the League of Gentlemen and stuff, and obviously there's the three of them and Jeremy Dyson's missing. Um, but also the, the out of, um, or the, what's it closed for the season out of season idea. I felt like, is, th- are they, is this like a, almost a, a kind of feeling that they have in their careers, like not to say that they're past it or anything like that, but like there must be an element when you, when you're getting older and you're creating stuff and you're feeling, and you're looking at like new people coming through and like all of that sort of stuff, culture changing and everything. Oh no, I, d- I definitely think there's, um, you could definitely pull that thread in that if bringing them back together, if you think of the league now, I think they would struggle to make the league now. Mm-hmm. I don't, th- I think that as you said, the culture, the, I think things have moved on. I think they've spoken about how they felt about sort of the Papa Lazaru things. And how that's been sort of reinterpreted by people mm. that that is kind of them as a four making those kind of things they're out of season yeah. I think yeah that that could be a nod and I mean they'd already he'd already said that the uh, pedo shed was closed for the winter it already mentioned that before mm. the reveal of the out of season so I think it was a very deliberate showing of the sign it didn't need yeah. to be there he he was having to unchain everything because it was clear that it wasn't open and then he says it's closed for the winter and then we get later on again a very yeah. clear sign that it's out of season mm. um, and the opening shot as well is that doesn't look like an out of season no, building shot. yeah there's like smash windows boarded up stuff like that's not 
something that's that's closed and ready to reopen in a few yeah. months time when spring comes back around yeah and, and i think you're right that's very deliberately focusing on that sign um i was, I was quite struck by that a couple, mm. couple of things i was quite struck by that where reese is or lawrence is there uh, there's there's one with the boat hire i don't know if it is is it that same shot and you've got the the boat hire prices behind i'm like desperate to see what is on that side oh i didn't catch that um i don't think you can see it i think it's blurred because he's in focus at the front um so i don't know if like on a super high massive super high definition massive tv you might be able to see it but which is it, where we're going to bring in our new sponsor sky glass <laughs> <laughs> no um, um <laughs> but yeah obviously like with the with the ending in mind for that it's like what what's it cost to get to hire the boat to get across the yeah uh, river that's true yeah. yeah so quite an interesting little hmm tidbit tidbit <laughs> lawrence oh my god how are you hey callum <laughs> oh, you're looking good Ooh. so i think the last time i saw you it was this century wasn't it it was kenzie's wedding so june 2010 was it really yeah god poor old kenzie or kenzie's wife well quite are they still together no, no, no. He lives in Germany now. We're Facebook friends. Should we talk about the characters a mm. bit more in their own right? Well, yeah. Callum's an interesting one. That means a dove. <laughs> Don't think it's <laughs> relevant. <laughs> Don't think it's relevant. It might be. We'll find out. Um, so he's now working in um, obstetrics and gynecology. Elbow, Elbow deep, deep in and family. family. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Daz. <laughs> Um, who seems initially quite happy with his lot in life, mm. with his partner and their dogs. I, I <laughs> the fact that there was a oh, he's got yeah, well done, well done for getting some girls, yeah, some some yeah, some children. Well done. Oh, they're not children; <laughs> they're dogs. <laughs> I called that, didn't I? You did, yeah. I did. <laughs> So they're going to be dogs. They're going to be dogs. <laughs> the, the only reason is I've met I've met too many people like that. He's like, now the way they're talking about no, that, that it's going to no, be no, they're going to be, it's gonna be they're it's going dogs. to be what they like to call fur babies, <laughs> which <laughs> is a horrible, horrible phrase. <laughs> yes, he's got a couple of dogs. He's now a grandfather as well. So. A grandfather. <laughs> I, you called it, but it was a, there was a very deliberate <laughs> grandfather, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are they, five and nine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, confusing with his dog daughters. Um, he is quite condescending. Um, very dismissive of the sports science degree and, and the children's book and all of those things. Um, and he, I think you said before when you were trying to describe Donna in a way that didn't seem condescending. Um, he seems to like Donna in a, this is quite fun and simple <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of way where he can make his kind of off the cuff jokes and she won't really understand them. Yeah. Like she doesn't react to him having been in five guys um, and those sorts of things. And he, mm -hmm. I think he thinks he's operating at a, a bit of a higher level than her and she's yeah. a bit of fun to play with. Um, mentally. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. But it turns out he's not not happy at all. No. Although it's quite, it's part, it's kind of one of those. You're in a position. You've managed to get yourself to a position where you have the luxury of being unhappy. Mm. In that, if you know what I mean, that kind of there's yeah you've yeah <laughs> yeah exactly and in a in a kind of roundabout way what he's not happy with in the big picture is just the process of aging and the process of time moving on because he says i'd do anything to give it up and start again which suggests he would do the same thing again um yeah. which in itself is like oh great so you've you have chosen a path that you've got a lot out of if you'd start it again like if he was saying what would you I'd, do differently really yeah exactly that's the question isn't it would you do anything differently it doesn't 
I mean, nothing comes out on uh, along that because um, it'd be different if it was like you know, do anything to give it up and just do something completely different. And so that sort of fits with this, yeah, this theme of I don't know. It's the contrast really with Reese in that he has been on this journey through a career, through life. Um, yes, he wants to start again, but that's just don't wouldn't wouldn't we all if we were, you know, you get to that the autumn of your years maybe or feel like you're sort of around there and yeah you want to be young again and that's what uh, that's what a lot of this is about like 30 yeah. years ago but also that that little that small stage of his journey Callum's journey I think his three-year undergrad degree um would have been quite small in terms of what he went through to qualify as a doctor and so from that point of view it's kind of natural that that was kind of just a a passing thing Mm -hmm. and everything got a whole lot more intense for him after that and so his journey of becoming a doctor there's that little bit of insignificant stuff his initial first three years when he was hanging out with um Lawrence and Daz and then that very quickly he he very quickly moved past that into his his real doctor stuff i guess and mm-hmm. whereas lawrence has got the reminder every single day of the of those three years together because that's where he still is yeah and he's replaced his university scarf three times <laughs> what's so. he doing to them <laughs> yeah that's the question yeah i don't replace scarf. I, I think i've got like four scarves that i've just had for a long long time they don't ever need replacing <laughs> maybe i don't wear them enough maybe i don't know yeah no i don't know how you wear it and unless that's a, a nod to the fact that no he literally wears it all year round yeah maybe yeah to everything <laughs> <laughs> poor lawrence <laughs> oh. hey you still got the old university scarf you sado this is my third one they keep updating it i think this one has got a slightly cows all glammed up in his marks and sparks blue arbor gear uh hugo boss you cheeky son what are you come as you look like a Homeless shaking Stevens. Uh, it's the latest fashions. Do they not have this in that London? Hey, 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 hey. There's the the moment where we can sort of um, segue into into Darren when Darren rocks up and he's like, "Oh, you got the? Is it the Marks and Spencer's Blue Harbour? Uh, you have got all the nice yeah. clothes." <laughs> he's like Hugo Boss, or <laughs> and that's and that's why it's quite then funny that. Um, Darren's lecturing him on fashion, <laughs> all the fashions, as he's as he rocks up in double denim <laughs> and can't identify a nice Hugo Boss suit. <laughs> and look, Darren, he's yeah, just from the moment we meet him, um, I know who he is from our days at university. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all, to be honest, I think we all know a Darren. We all know a Darren. Oi, oi, Savaloy. Yeah, and he, I mean, he has a. Well, he's. <laughs> I mean, it's a great, again, a great Steve Pemberton character because he has, he traverses that line between um, the kind of silly and the really yes. earnest. And sensitive. Really sensitive, yeah. yeah like he's... when he comes out to, to Callum to say, um, you know, I'm really proud of you. Like, there's such a lovely tone to the way that he's like, well done, mate. I'm really proud of you. Um, and he doesn't get that in return. Like there's, mm. there's very little of that back. Um, cause he's just, Callum has been very dismissive of, uh, well, both Lawrence and Callum have been yeah. dismissive of the sports science, the oxymoron. Um, and then, yeah, comparing his medical degree with, with the sports science degree and just, what was it? Learning a bit about Lucas aid and yeah. <laughs> something else. Tennis, tennis pitches and stuff uh, <laughs> careful sorry dyslexic yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come on to that there you go so. we've got, yeah what i do i i do like that they do produce these three characters that are so completely different yet were probably very similar while they're at university together and they really kind of hammer home like the divergence in where they've headed off to, because mm. 
Callum meeting Darren right now would not would not be interested in spending time with him at all. And no. the same is probably true of Lawrence. Um, I, I I get the impression that there's a real highlighting there of the way they've, like I said, they've diverged in their personalities as they've sort of grown up. Mm-hmm. Lawrence is probably the only one who has stuck. D- Daz has kind of followed his path off and with whatever he was, whatever he's ended up doing with his <laughs> supply te- P supply teaching. Yeah. It's like, Always good to be specific. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Comedy is in the specificity. <laughs> Supply <laughs> PE teacher. Yeah, brilliant. And yeah, Callum would have got his head down and ended up being, and if you are now a consultant, you are now driving an expensive car and wearing expensive clothes mm-hmm. um, and enjoying time with your family, with your yeah. dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, li- I like the way those characters yeah, created. one of the things with Lawrence, because I think that's so true, that he, I think he's written as that, the kind of not a lot going on. He's not, has he, has, does he know about Game of Thrones and, you know, the bad ending? Mark Gattis knows about Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> I liked his little nod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but Lawrence's character, I think that's one of the things for me that I didn't connect with was, Lawrence is just a, he's a bit of a frustrating character. And I know there is the, the sentimental aspects that, that come with the, the firework and everything. But I don't know, there's just something that I didn't connect with him. Which is weird because if, if, you connect, if you generally connect with characters, not always, but you will often connect with characters that you can kind of identify, identify a part of yourself in. Mm-hmm. And I guess in everyone there is some sense of sort of feeling like you've disconnected from people and that's difficult and you are kind of stuck wanting to be back in those days. And But every single one of those characters, well, the other two of those characters also have that. Mm. And no, I think it's very difficult to find yourself identifying with Lawrence because that doesn't apply to that many people. And so to have him as the character that is supposed to be the one where you feel that empathy for him mm. is tough. Like I don't, you're right. You don't yeah. connect with him and you don't go, yeah, that I can really, I can really get to grips with how he's feeling right now and his massive sense of loss. Cause like I said, he, like his massive sense of loss is very much tied to the fact that she was a link to something that he wanted to keep hold of and he's now reaching for his old friends to try and keep hold of that Mm. and that's not happening either so yeah and the part that would be connecting them is him telling them about that yeah and he's he's almost trying to convince them and sell it as but everything's been past days and like the bonnie's death has been kept from them like he there's um I mean, one of the themes that I wrote down was like this, this idea of you never told me. And it's something that comes up a few times through the episode. It's like, you never told, like Callum says, you never told me Darren is coming. Um, and then Lawrence is like, well, it's a reunion. And to Callum, it's like a reunion of who, essentially. Yeah. Like, in some ways, he's, he's like, I, who I guess he, he, didn't really, he didn't identify them as like a core group. Exactly, yeah. Who, who would be reuniting? Yeah. Um, and then Taryn says, you didn't tell me, yeah, or you told me it was a party boat or whatever. And then Darren's told Donna it's a party boat. Um, and then, like, you never told me that Bonnie's dead, essentially. There's, yeah. there's all these things that have never been You never been told set. me you had daughters. You never told, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all you these never things. never told me that, you had dyslexia. You never, t- yeah. Yeah, exactly. I've written down melons there. Like it's, <laughs> I love that's so good. Yeah, it's another it's cracking like, line. That's something again. So these guys and they're not, they're not close. They're not communicating, are they? They're not communicating. You know, it's an issue of communication. <laughs> Teaches there, you know, Phil Crawford. Was it? Creepy Crawford. He was a bit of a peddler. How do you know? Well, yeah, I tell you, I work there. Oh, are you? Yeah, the psychology department. Since where? About eight years. I put it all in my Christmas round robin. Don't you read them? 
Oh, I think it must just go straight into my spam folder. So Lawrence is still sending out his round robin, his Christmas round robin, and no one's really reading that. Goes straight to spam. Yeah, but then again, I think that's, again, Lawrence, not not in a horrible way, Lawrence has overbuilt his idea of how relevant he is in these people's lives still. the mem- His memories of their time at university, he still has in his head as the most relevant things to him. And his belief that the three of them are all equally relevant to each other. And unfortunately for him, that isn't the case. Yeah. Which I guess is, if you want to sort of look at the merrily, merrily, um, life is but a dream thing in a kind of literal sense. It's kind of Lawrence's life itself is predicated on this sense that they're still friends, that all of this is still relevant. And that these are the people that you call on the day. And it, it just seems weird that he keeps even like, he doesn't even say at the beginning of this day, like, Bonnie died and I want to go and do Mm. something with her ashes today. That's why I wanted you to come here because this is important. And like, it's why he keeps that a secret is a bit weird. That really weird thing at the beginning when he, when they're getting ready to set off out on the boat and he says, it's all planned out on the lake when it gets dark, there's so much to catch up on. Mm. Like (laughs) what? (laughs) Why does any of this need it to be planned out in the dark? Why do you need to go into the middle of a dark lake yeah. and catch up with each other? You don't. Book a table at a nice restaurant, <laughs> <laughs> eat some nice food, drink some nice wine, and have a nice chat. And then blow up a firework. <laughs> <laughs> and then blow up your dead wife's ashes. But I don't... <laughs> Very quiet. You haven't lured me here under false pretenses, have you? <laughs> Close for the winter. Friend of Bonnie's runs it, she let me have the key. Oh, where's Bonnie? We get to see her today. Uh, yeah, yeah, she'll be here later. How's your partner? That feels to me like the the setting up in the writing, isn't it? It's the creating the sense for the audience of what is this going to be? What's going to go on here? Um, and I think that, I don't know, That that's where it felt like, again, oh, it, uh, it's not it's not seamless in that sense and with because for me it was like okay bonnie is not here but bonnie is obviously a significant thing she's going to be somewhere in this episode um and so it's almost like either she's dead or she's waiting somewhere where they're heading on this pedalo in she'll be there to greet them in the middle of the night with like some kind of wicker man or something and like there's going to be some great vengeance thing um yeah, so it was like she will be a important part of this, mm-hmm. um, and I think it just felt like, yeah, you're kind of you're setting that up in a way that doesn't, add, yeah, it just didn't quite feel like this is how it would be, like or how it even could be, even with someone like Lawrence in real life. I'm not sure. And yeah, and then when it is finally revealed. And I, I, was it the ashes in the bag? Was it a head? I don't know. <laughs> What's in the bag? <laughs> hoping for a head. Hoping for a head. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. He didn't that, talk about ashes, so maybe it was her head, head attached to a firework. <laughs> <laughs> Different bag. Oh, that's bleak. <laughs> that's hideous. Um, but then the firework, yeah. I know certain uh, reaction online, people really like the fireworks. And found them really nice. And I really didn't like the finding the thing in the bag. Mm. But I didn't like it. I didn't like him pulling that thing out of the bag saying that it was ashes attached to fireworks. But it was ashes. We know it was ashes because of that. Oh, yeah. Um, cool. yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Everyone's just been shouting that. like Head fireworks. Ashes um, to flashes, not head to <laughs> flashes. Yeah, it, I didn't like that. That why, felt very, very obvious. Oh, because of the obviousness I, of it. I don't like the spelling out of things. I, I, it right. wasn't It wasn't needed. The timing was a bit kind of odd as well. And he 
just at that point decided to reach into the bag um, and find it just as the fireworks were about to go up. I found that a bit jarring. Do you think they had a conversation? Because I, I felt the same, that it was like weird that after all this time, Lawrence has been on that little island for ages. And then that's the moment. Check the he, bag? Yeah, he checks the bag. And, and I thought, do you think it was a decision? Because it could have easily been the other way around. The fireworks go off and they're like, what on earth's going on? And then he reaches then he into the out. bag and sees that. And then it's like, there's the explanation. Um, but it's obviously, yeah, like whether that was a yeah a deliberate decision not to do it that way. Because it wasn't as if it was like a, it wasn't Chekhov's fireworks either. It was like that immediate, <laughs> wasn't it? They like, weren't there on the, the, on the back of the boat with everyone going, why are there fireworks? No, the only thing, it, like Chekhov's bag, obviously the bag, but then that was just, okay, a bag. No, it's, People it's got bring ashes a bag. in. Uh, actually, I mean, there's the little bit where Donna disturbs the bag and she gets a bit of a ticking off from Reese, mm -hmm. uh, from Lawrence about being careful with the bag, which again, I guess that's your, that's your Chekhov's bag. Um, <laughs> Cheers, man. Which contains Chekhov's gun, Chekhov's mayonnaise. Whose bags? Is Lawrence, is it Lawrence? Is this your bag? Oh, no, it's Chekhov's. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't like that. Um, and I don't know. There was that sweet thing of even though they've realised that there's potentially bits of um, bits of ashes just raining down on them as they sit on this lake, that Daz decides that this is a time for a little romantic snuggle to look up at the fireworks and i guess it is <laughs> <laughs> but that is one of those moments and that, that whole setup that whole thing of them being so calmly just sat on that boat while it goes dark and they're just <laughs> still there like is he still yeah he's still on over there we can yeah. make any effort no this is it now and then, we'll just wait for something <laughs> and the fireworks go off and then it's like oh isn't oh. that lovely and it's like <laughs> i would not be in any way that what calm. is happening what <laughs> It doesn't matter that they're going off. We're still stuck floating in some pretty cold temperatures right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I would have... Do we have a plan? I would have swum. I'd have gone. You risked it. I'd have risked Swim it. over, run back to the car, get the heaters on. We don't know how they end up being rescued. And that might be a good little opportunity to explore some theories okay. about their existence. Ashes to Flashes Memorial Fireworks. So she's... <laughs> Promised your party, didn't I? No, I am gonna cry. I don't know. I find it an easier thing to reconcile if I think of those characters as part of a dream or part of his crossing to the other side that is going on, like in his, whether it's in his head or whether it's in just the, the process of passing on. I think it's really, really sad if they are in his head. Because that means that even his, even his fantasy of having them back there is a disappointment. Mm -hmm. Because that would be, he decides that he needs to bring those people back together in his head as part of his crossing over to the other side. And in doing so, realizes that they're not really that into this whole thing as he is. <laughs> yeah. But then there's and this beautiful be really moment. Sad. There's a beautiful moment when he's, when he's with the ferryman and is worried about his friends and, and then he reassures him saying they're on the other side. And to me, that's, that could be a moment of you can let go of them. Now mm -hmm. you're free, you're free from that stuckness. You're free from living your entire existence being defined by that moment. You can let them go and you can go and step onto this new plane with whoever it is that calls his name at the end. I'm presuming it's Bonnie. Yeah. Um, or Donna. Maybe Donna's there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I kind of, 
there was something about that as a as a way of conceptualizing it that felt it felt easier in some ways because mm. because of those things we talked about in terms of it, it didn't feel like the way that humans would act in that situation like on that boat they wouldn't be calm and then just enjoying the fireworks and yeah. yeah like and even the entrances of them they almost come in like cameo performers yeah. at the beginning it's like oh suddenly mark gattis is there oh hello like you he's just entered down the road exactly in the same way as like people just appear in dreams and yeah. then here's Darren appearing. Oy as, oy! That, and that's <laughs> it, it's exactly how he would have been. Amped up, know. Darren. <laughs> exactly. And then, oh, he, Darren's brought somebody. Like, that's a classic thing that Darren always used to do is ruin everything by bringing some strange woman to the event. Um, and just all of those kinds of things are almost like exaggerated version of, of those memories. Um. And to me that, and uh, like with the, the thing where he has to pay the ferryman at the end, um, just in terms of like, I guess the mythology around that, of having that coin placed in your mouth after death, um, before burial. So you're buried with that coin in your mouth so that you've got the payment for the ferryman to take you to the other side rather than being um, kind of stuck essentially in limbo as a ghost. Um, if you if you're unable to pay him, so that would suggest that's, that's been placed there. That's what and that's what gets me. What I like I said right at the beginning of this was that that ending seems like if you if you work backwards from that, like you should then be able to spot something exactly like that. Like this whole thing has been a process of him going from one side to the other. Mm-hmm. And that the whole the whole process of getting into the boat with those different people um, that, that maybe represent things about his past uh, and it all getting messy and it all getting stuck yeah. um, on his way across that that whole sort of journey process that should work, but there's too much in it that stops it from working. Yeah. So you mean and, you should be able to watch it again and that all fit. Perfectly yeah, to- and I and I don't, and I think that might be it, and I, and that's why, I've, and I said that phrase earlier, like ham fisted, the, the whole um, Shannon's Obel is what I think it's called, with the coin in the mouth, paying mm-hmm. the ferryman Shannon um, or Channon. Shannon sounds like <laughs> so Shannon sounds like a completely different character. Just like- <laughs> I think it's isn't it uh, Charon? Charon, not Shannon or Car- Caron. <laughs> I think. Caron, not Car- Shannon. <laughs> not lose, Shannon all, mate. lose all of Shannon. Really sorry. I... There should be some more mythology stuff signposted and running through the whole thing. And it just feels like a bit of a bolt on at the end as a, this feels quite clever symbolism. Mm. I only think, I think that's only clever symbolism if it's elsewhere or maybe it is. Right. And I haven't found it yet. That's how I kind of feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder if, if more stuff on f- future viewings will come out with that. I'm, I'm not like it didn't the second or third time that I watched it as I was looking for that. Um, but there yeah. might be other stuff that we, you know, I mean, aren't I've, looking forward to. I've stayed away from the inside, inside number nine, as yeah, always, because yeah. we don't want to. I mean, I've, there's some stuff I've picked up from people talking about it. A lot of people have said that it's been suggested that the other guys are all still alive mm-hmm. because he says they're on the other side. However, if I was being taken from one side of something to the other and was told that the people were on the other side that to me would suggest that they were already on the other side (laughs) they'd already been taken over i don't know whether that's like a glass half full (laughs) glass half empty thing um but for me that would be a yeah they're already on the other side yeah and uh, that doesn't that doesn't also counter the theory that they're not actually there in the episode it's just they're like if they're still alive maybe they died at various times and this is all in his head. 
and this is all unresolved stuff that he hasn't dealt with in his head to do with them. I don't yeah. know. But even if they're still alive, it could be, yeah, I know who you're talking about because I've seen like your dreams because I'm some supernatural dude. Sharon. And they're I'm on the other side. Sharon. <laughs> I'm supernatural Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. it, he um, he says that he's been watching him, and I, I assume that means that he's been waiting for him to reach the time where he is ready to cross over to the other side because he's struggling with his wife's death so much that it's coming, and so he's mm. just so Shannon's just been waiting for a chance yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, that's another. I don't know enough about the myth, but whether he's been dead for a little while and now he's like being because is he being watched is he out of season is he in this place this sort of limbo place that is empty Maybe, and yeah nothing and and whatever the symbolism of him um you know sending those fireworks up like that's the moment that he's then able to to let go and to pass on um and so this is all taking place in because I guess that's the thing between death and whatever happens after burial, even because that's the that's the point, isn't it? Like you die, you get prepared, you get the the coin is placed in your mouth. You're dead when the coin gets placed in your mm -hmm. mouth. Um, you're in sort of the, a limbo, we think. Yeah, so it's that sort of place. And then you're on one side of the river Styx. <clears throat> yeah, ready to go over to the other one. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not done. It's not that he's watching him while he's alive. It's just he's waiting for him to be ready to pass, like within, beyond death. Which is signified by him finally letting go of Bonnie by sticking her head on a rocket and firing it into the air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quite. So is that, is that what it is? Is that... Can he not go and see Bonnie on the other side until he has come to terms with the fact that she is on the other side? Yeah. And as he gets to the point where he can finally let her go because he's had this whole thing bottled up inside him, um, unable to really let go of her until these people in his life that he thinks are more than they actually are know about it. He's not ready to actually take that journey himself because he hasn't accepted that she has. Mm -hmm. And when he does that, that's him then being released. And the fireworks are him now releasing himself to make that journey across himself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's starting with him saying she's dead. Because yeah. maybe the reason he hasn't told Finally. him is because he's never admitted he it. He's never told it. He's never uttered those words. And then that is a moment where it's like, okay, the first the first step in releasing himself from and here we go. Now I'm heading off the boat. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Right. I'm finally let sending her out. Yeah. I'm letting go. I've been holding on to these ashes, but now I'm sending them out mm -hmm. in as big a way as possible. Hence the fireworks. Cause how better to scatter ashes than yeah. exploding them in the sky, scattering them over as <laughs> bigger area as you can. You can't get them back. No, maybe, yeah. maybe that's it. Yeah, maybe we've and just so him sort of toppling back off the boat after admitting she's sort of dead. succumbing to it. It's like there we go. I'm released. I'm yeah. Yeah, maybe we've got something here. I'm satisfied with that. Maybe it's coming together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh come on! This is ridiculous. I thought you said Bonnie was going to be here. She is. Well, call her. Tell her to come early. There's no signal. Well, can't we all just check again? Yeah, I'm sure I had a couple of bars earlier. Is she still on the same number? What network are you on? Give us your phone, Larry. No. Give it to There's him. There's no point. Why not? Because Bonnie's dead. <laughs> She's dead. She died. I think the thing with the Inside, Inside Number Nine podcast is I, I don't know whether they almost deliberately underplay what they're doing mm -hmm. and just so as not to make it outrageously overly accessible yeah and so if you're going there looking for 
a straight answer as to what these things mean, then you're probably not going to get it. And so seeing these things where you get like an overly simplistic thing of, yeah, they're just alive over on the other side. They're all mm-hmm. sorted. He's now, he's dead. And this is just meant to show he's dead. Um, kind of understates what was going on. And maybe actually this is about a whole thing that's playing out in his head. And yeah. I think we've now almost tied together the whole thing into a thing that's <laughs> playing out in his head. We've warped it around. We've <laughs> yeah. And I, I, and it's worth just remembering that, and, and it, it's just a theory as well. Like, you know, yeah. obviously. And, but that's one of the fun things about this sort of stuff. And Reese is a big fan of obviously horror. Mm-hmm. And he's a big fan of David Lynch. And that is a fundamental part of engaging with that sort of work is you literally actually, you, cannot take that at face value. Yeah. If you, you don't do, spoon feed the audience with exactly what you like they might take from it as meaning. I, I challenge anyone to watch Inland Empire and go, oh, well, if you take that at face value, it was this. <laughs> You've got no hope. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's been great having, um, I was just looking through some of the tweets. So I, I tweeted that we were <laughs> recording this over the weekend. I saw someone was horrified. We were going to be <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, we've, we've, we've got slow. Yeah, that was... Uh, Cat boy, or cat boy actually. Boy, boy is spelt like that, isn't it? On a boat, B H O Y. Yes, cat Relevant. boy. Lovely. Um, yeah. So thank you everybody for uh, reply. Like, it, and again, it's great to see that people really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, yeah, Ryan, man. Sorry, we've probably let you down here. Thought it was charming, straightforward piece. Don't know if there's a ton of onion to dig into, but I enjoyed the pedo ride. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that that is the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> that line. I'll talk amongst yourselves. I don't want you listening to it. Good idea, and actually, it might kill off some of the weeds. It's not acid. Oh, bonus ball. I like her. This is a story in my life. What, listening to a woman pissing off a pedo? Pedo alone. No, being stuck. When we graduated, I stayed in the area, married Bonnie, did a PGCE. Next thing I'm back teaching the same course I just graduated from. We've all moved on and had lives. I'm still living in 1989. I wouldn't worry about it, Larry. You've not missed much. Although Game of Thrones was pretty good. Even then, they ruined the ending. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And actually, brilliant Wordle starter. I used it. Um, I had never, I'd never considered <laughs> using it as a starter word until uh, Thursday morning. Was it Thursday morning? And it set me up perfectly because it was like, <laughs> did it start with P? I can't remember what the word was. Um, but yeah. It was, was it plant? I can't remember. It might have been plant. Um, Gave a few. three Three vowels. You know, I love that since we last recorded, Wordle has now become a thing and is now probably on its way down. <laughs> yeah. It's reached its apex. <laughs> not for me. I'm on a streak of 109 not out. I hope you're looking forward to this becoming a Wordle podcast. <laughs> I've, played, I've played 112. The first three was me just saying the same word over and over again <laughs> because I didn't understand the game. <laughs> then oh. I, really got, I got into the swing of things then. Well done. Yeah, cheers, man. Um, great. This is one where I would be really interested to hear what, how, why people think we've missed the mark. Yeah, I'd love to. And if, if, if it's sort of stimulated any more, because I think that was the interesting thing, was feeling a little bit like, oh, everybody's really enjoyed it and is talking about the, how moving it is and sentimental and whatnot. It's like, is there anything more to this? Is or am I more? just dead inside? Maybe I'm dead <laughs> inside, yeah. yeah. Maybe I've spent six too many years working as an undertaker. And Maybe seen, that's what it is. I'm seeing novelty now ways of disposing of ashes. <laughs> 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 Yet no one had ever attached them to an explosive. <laughs> well, set it alight. You say that. 
No one ever attached a head. <laughs> but I've seen the um, I've seen oh. Ash's fireworks before. Have you? Mm. Yeah. And not just with Freddie Flint up on the pedal, though. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. It was not a uh, it was not a new concept to me. <laughs> so cool. Well, yeah, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If you've got any stuff that you want to share with us, please do email us at quietnightinside no nine at gmail dot com. Or uh, get in touch via Twitter, which we do keep an eye on, even though, you know, we don't appear there very often. Um, but at AQNIN9, it'd be lovely to hear from you. Um, great. Well, I look forward to seeing the next one. What is it, Mr. Mr. King. King? Seems to be about being in a school. Mm. Your area of expertise my area of expertise being in a school Come we've on. all been there mate we have actually we've all been there it's everyone's area of expertise that's true okay well we'll see you for that bye 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 bye